Okay, so let's start by showing you my setup. I have a function generator. This is an RC circuit, and they're connected to the first two channels of my oscilloscope. What I'd like to do is to show you how to go through all the basic functions of this Keysight DSO X 2024A digital storage oscilloscope. Let's start by doing horizontal scaling. So to do horizontal scaling, I'm going to go to where it says horizontal. Changing the horizontal knob will give me a difference in the value of seconds per division horizontally. So turning clockwise gives me less seconds per division and turning counterclockwise gives me more seconds per division. I'm going to set this for now to 200 milliseconds per division. And then if I want to change the way that the voltages are displayed, I can go to the channel. So the first channel here is uh, currently at five volts and I can use the knob down here to change the value of the voltage per division. So doing this increases it to two, going even further goes to one. I can crank it the other way, that'll give me 10 volts, five volts. I can do the same thing with the other one. And so all this is representing is each of these square grid boxes is a division. So the number of volts per division tells me, based on that scale, exactly how it is. So you can see that right now my waveforms are ranging from plus 5 to minus 5 volts. Another thing that I might want to do is I might want to change the way that signals are displayed. So if I click on this horizontal button up here, I can go to time mode normal. Right now it's on normal, but I could choose it to roll. And so what this does is it constantly rolls through and refreshes. The way that normal works is that the way that normal works is that it refreshes at the zero point every time. And so it takes there's some processing delay to make things happen. I can also change my time reference to be left, right, or center. So under normal time mode, it'll look like this. Uh, it's really up to your own discretion to decide what works best for you. You can see the signal rolling through this way. I'm gonna put it back at center for the purpose of the rest of this video. Choosing the number button associated with one of my channels will give me the option of choosing the probe scale. If I use the probes that come with it, those are 10 to one, and I can change that number using this push to select little knob here. If you're just using, say, a BNC cable with connectors, that's going to be a one to one, but typically we're gonna call the probes as 10 to one. That, those are the ones that come with the oscilloscope. Also in the same location, we have this knob down here, which I can use to adjust where ground or reference is. So typically it's at zero, but if I increase it or decreases, it moves my waveform up and down. Sometimes this is nice if I don't like waveforms on top of each other. And if I want to return it to zero, I can just push in on the button and it will very quickly return. We can do the same thing with channel two. I'm also able to change my zero reference on the horizontal or time scale. So that is done by using this knob up here and I can move it either forward or backward give it a delay, and again, I can push in to bring it back to zero, and you can see it says delay of zero. I'm also able to run or stop using the run stop button. What that does is it stops the signal, and so I can take measurements. I, I would be able to move the signal back and forth. What we're going to do first is we're going to show you how to measure, and typically we like to measure using cursors. I press the cursors button, and I can choose a mode and source, and I can choose which cursor I would like. In this case, I want to choose X1. And what this will let me do is it will let me measure differences on the X direction. So I'm going to put it right here on this falling edge. I'm going to go ahead and change to X2. And then I can go ahead and see this. And what you can see right here is that it gives me a delta X. It gives me the distance in between values. And I could do the same type of thing using the Y cursors to measure vertical distance. And so Y1 I could set to the top of this waveform. Similarly, Y2 I could set to the bottom of the waveform. And I can measure a delta Y, and you see that it's about 10 volts. And then if I want to measure particular things on my signal, let's say we run and we turn our cursors off, I can press the measure key, and I can choose a number of different types of measurements. So I can go with uh, period, frequency, width, etc. So let's look at, for example, frequency. I could add another measurement then, so that gives me it's about a hertz. 
let's add a measurement. Let's say the period, which is of course at one over the frequency. Let's select that. And now I've got the period, which is about a second. All right, and then the last thing I want to do is I want to show you how to save something to a file. So I can press the save recall button and then I can go save and then I can choose a format to set up. I can save it as an image. I can save it as a CSV file, which is super useful if I want to save to Excel or something so that way I can open it in MATLAB and do something. And then we can choose where to save to. Ideally, I would have a USB drive plugged in and then I can save my data to a file and open it up in Excel or MATLAB. That's a pretty quick rundown on how to do things on this oscilloscope. I do have another video about triggering on this oscilloscope and you're welcome to check that out on my YouTube channel. Thanks, that's all.